All right, thank you, Stein. Um, so we have a bunch of questions that have already started rolling in. So very much appreciated, everyone, and you can continue to submit questions, and we will answer as many of these as possible. So the first question that we'd really like to dive into, we have a multitude of questions that are asked uh, really around connectivity. And I think the most important thing to keep in mind is the funny thing about communication, you have to connect with people. Um, and so when people are separated by distances, uh, you have to have connectivity of some sort. So this is obviously an app that downloads to your smartphone. Um, if you look at the infrastructure that is being uh, uh, invested in, uh, the infrastructure of the future, it is mobile technology based. Um, and so if you're looking at uh, where resources are being placed, it is uh, in that infrastructure. Now, uh, one of the benefits to Pulsera is uh, we can connect uh, via Wi-Fi, via a cellular network, and for the main alerting, we can even roll over to pagers if you're in a dead zone. Uh, but just like it's a limitation with any technology, any of the archaic technologies that you use for communication, it's a simple fact to communicate, you have to be able to connect with each other. So a couple of other uh, questions, one was about disaster, like what happens in uh, disasters where different things go down. I can tell you a, a, an example in East Texas where uh, electricity went down, uh, Wi-Fi went down uh, in a bad storm, and the only thing that was working uh, for paging and alerting was Pulsera. Because in, instead of having just one method for connectivity, we have multiple. Uh, but again, that is a limitation. Uh, another question was around kind of how much data is this? Um, uh, being consumed, how much connectivity do you need? To run a case without images, it's tiny, tiny, tiny little packets of information. And so that connectivity is very, very easy. Obviously, pictures or video will be more and more. Uh, one of the other questions was about FirstNet, and I can say that um, uh, we are uh, working with FirstNet. We don't have to be do anything special to uh, Pulsera. Uh, basically, uh, Pulsera works as an app, it just needs connectivity. FirstNet is another means of connectivity, it's a reserved bandwidth. Uh, in fact, they, at their headquarters, they actually have, uh, or will have in the, in the next few weeks, a version of Pulsera that they're working with and able to demo to people. Uh, so I, I think that answers a lot of the questions surrounding connectivity. Um, Stein, you might have some other uh, comments about um, more practical applications of connectivity in a rural area. Yeah, well, out in uh, Colorado, along the Front Range Mountains, we deal with a lot of connectivity issues. Uh, one block will have connectivity, the next one we will not, um, and, uh, and that's just something that we live with. Uh, to, to be honest, definitely Pulsera is not immune to that. Uh, we do have certain circumstances where information will be put in and we have a challenge on sending that information, but it's really no different than uh, the same issue we have with making a phone call. So we know that, okay, on this block we can't send that information right here, but 60 seconds later we'll be able to transmit that information no problem. So it is something that has room for improvement, but is... Uh, not a, um, uh, a rate limiting or usage limiting factor for us. Perfect, thanks Stein. Um, here's another question for you. It's really centered around how many, uh, kind of what's the volume in your, in your region, specifically the first during the kind of the pilot period? Yeah, the, the volume, uh, if, as long as you're talking about STEMIs and CVAs specifically, the volume uh, it hasn't changed from the trial period uh, through now. Uh, we have, uh, in, in the first uh, three months of setting up Pulsera, we had, give or take one or two, 74 STEMI alerts that came in and 138 uh, CBA alerts that came in using Pulsera. And that's just from the main uh, EMS agencies right here in the city of Colorado Springs. It really does not encompass uh, the counties uh, surrounding it. And, uh, but that gives you a, a general idea that it's uh, a pretty high volume. 
Great, thanks, Stein. Uh, the next question, we have several that are uh, really surrounding um, integration asked in several different ways. So um, overall, does, does Pulsera integrate with other technologies? Uh, so the answer to that really, we are built where we can. Uh, in fact, we're launching our integration strategy this fall, uh, and we've already selected our first partner to do so as well. Um, but I think it's very important to keep in mind um, uh, how and why we built the system the way that we do. Uh, we believe very strongly that it must work out of the box. Um, so we focused on integrating people first, um, and then we can uh, come back in and integrate the technology second. Uh, but that's the only way it has to work out of the box. That's the only way you can bring up a region as complex as Colorado Springs or even cities that are 10 times that size, if you go in there with an integration of technologies first mindset, it's gonna be very, very complicated. Uh, so we need to be able to flip a switch and go live in a single day. And if integrations break down, Pulsera is still functional, uh, but we do definitely see the value of integrations and we are starting that process now. All right, uh, the next question, um, Stein, there's a question. What's the biggest lesson learned uh, from the hospital side about implementing Pulsera, and uh, what would you have done differently if you could do it all over again? Yeah, that's a good question. I, you know, as we mentioned in the webinar, we went live as an entire community with both of our hospital systems, all of our hospitals, and uh, over 19 EMS agencies all on the same day. And, uh, and we watched the process move on and on and get uh, more integrated into our system and more and more used as the days and weeks and months moved on. I would say that as we turn around and look back at the process, probably the biggest lesson learned and what we would do differently, not only from the hospital side but also from the EMS side, is to clearly identify uh, people within the system uh, both on the hospital side and on EMS side, that really are the uh, champions, the ones that are tasked with the responsibility of making sure that uh, Pulsera is running smoothly. The application itself doesn't need any help running smoothly. It's very, very simple. It's the coordination among all the different agencies and hospitals and service lines within the hospitals that uh, we realized uh, it was common ground and no one entity or service line felt as though they were ultimately responsible for making sure that it was moving smoothly and that glitches were work it worked out. Uh, we were eventually able to figure that out. Uh, if we had known that right from the beginning, I think that our process would have been uh, much smoother. Very good. Um, Okay, we have a lot of questions here that are um, asking uh, the price uh, question in multiple different ways. So uh, let me address the, the price specifically from an EMS uh, perspective uh, due to the focus of this meeting. So um, one of the key things to keep in mind is we really, um, as Pulsera, are not selling anything to EMS. Um, our, our role with the EMS is specifically to bring them to the larger healthcare team. Um, we basically make all pre-hospital communication for free. Um, we deliver that value for free. It's free to the hospital and free to EMS. Uh, one of the common head scratchers that we often get is why would you do something like that? Is there not value in it? And the, the answer is there's tremendous value in it. Um, but we are solving a very, very, very complex problem, regional systems of care. We're not just focused on pre-hospital communication. We are bringing pre-hospital communication to the larger table of uh, getting a, a single kind of communication hub for all healthcare entities uh, to participate in at the same time. And so if you're trying to deliver care to a very complex region, uh, kind of a, a medium-sized area of like Colorado Springs all the way to massive metro areas. Um, you're looking at 30, 40, 50 EMS agencies, 30 hospitals, um, trying to do pre-hospital, intra-facility, and inter-facility communication. We figured out the best way to solve the, the bigger problem is to deliver immense value um, 
solve the pre-hospital communication problem for free, elevate EMS to be able to participate in that greater um, healthcare team communication. So there's no hidden agenda. Um, that's what it is. Um, uh, Pulsera the, in the pre-hospital setting is uh, delivered at no charge. Uh, the hospitals ultimately see the value um, of the intra-facility and inter-facility communication, and they have the option then to purchase that. Um, the, uh, that kind of ties into the, uh, another question that we have, um, uh, and that is what's the process to engage uh, Pulsera? How long does it take uh, to uh, go through the process of talking to Pulsera, go through implementation, et cetera? Um, and then how do you manage, uh, well, if just one hospital out of three wants to go with Pulsera? Um, I'll answer a portion of that, and then I'd like um, Dr. Bronski to give his personal uh, experience and what it was like to engage with Pulsera, how we interacted through the process, and how long it took. Um, but the first piece that I really want to touch on from a Pulsera perspective is we are designed in such a way that you don't have to have 100% participation right out of the gate. Uh, Colorado Springs was amazing in the way they came together as a community and did this, but you can have it where um, it's not ideal for a medic, but it, when they're going to this facility, they use Pulsera. When they're going to this other facility, they don't. On the other end, you have to solve the problem as well. So if a hospital has Pulsera and not all EMS agencies are on board, um, they can actually start a case on behalf of EMS so they have one way to do their job. Uh, that's also one of the reasons why we made uh, Pulsera the pre-hospital communication for free. It was to help encourage uh, this adoption to get everyone one way to do their job, at least for the pre-hospital component. Um, so the next piece, um, Stein, I'll let you uh, take the, the question really about what's the process, what was the process like to engage uh, Pulsera, how we worked um, together to, to get everyone up in kind of the timeline. Uh, yeah, I, I wish I could say with confidence that I remember the exact timeline, uh, so I may be a little bit off here, but I, I do recall that when we first engaged it as a full community, and of course moving as a full community, it moved a little bit slower than it would if it was just one hospital entity. Um, uh, that we engaged in the in the late fall and uh, at the very beginning, uh, and then by uh, June uh, or the end of June or the very beginning of July of the next summer, we had our go live date through the entire community. Uh, I would, having this been my only experience, uh, I would imagine from what I've heard from other communities that the process is faster when it's just one hospital or one hospital system. Uh, of course, things always in life move slower than we would like because when we engaged, uh, obviously it was a fabulous experience, uh, the, the initial engagement, and we uh, had great conversations, but then everything goes into the uh, legal mode and IT mode uh, through the hospital systems and uh, those wheels uh, and those cogs move uh, sometimes at different speeds and all of that does need to line up. So there's a, uh, uh, under the surface, there's a lot that needs to happen in any uh, entity or facility to uh, make this uh, you know, come to fruition. Uh, but ultimately looking back, uh, it was probably just over six, uh, you know, six or seven months from the time where we said we want to do this to the time that we actually uh, were going live, and um, uh, and so I thought that moved fairly smoothly, especially from the community perspective. 